Now, Guy, you and I talk a lot about referrals and the importance of referrals and referral marketing. And we haven't yet done a segment on what are the things we can do to improve our referrals, right? So where would you start with on, okay, what do we need to do in order to drive more of this? And I'm going to set you up for your question, for your answer here, this free marketing channel. Ha! Huh. <laughs> now, now I can't. I was going to get into the constructive tips, but now that you've said it's free, I'm going to say, well, I don't you know. Could, there's I mean, nothing. You, there's you, nothing free. There's it's nothing gonna, free. It's going to be. It's going to take your time, or it's going to take your money. Okay. There's always a cost, but you know, constructively, you know, um, the the big, I you know, put your. There's always we always talk about put yourself in the referrers position, right? So who are the refer, who, number one? Who are the referrers? Right, former clients. Do you keep in touch with former clients? No, I don't. Um, other lawyers. Uh, are you are you making friends with lawyers in your community by publishing your clients' results on TikTok? <laughs> um, uh, other professionals, right? Because think about it. Most people that don't know a lawyer that might be seeking a referral or don't know a lawyer for the particular issue they're facing, um, they're going to go to somebody that they trust, might be an accountant, might be another professional service person. Um, so start thinking about who these folks are. But then once you get to, okay, now I know who the referral sources are, how are you nurturing the relationship with the referral source? How do you say thanks? So, so I got a card the other day yeah. in the mail, yeah. handwritten thank you note, and it was because of you, Guy. I got a card from Gina Guzman, who I did a talk with at ABA Tech Show. I had not met her until ABA Tech Show. We did a great talk together. Well, I think it was a great talk. She probably wishes I hadn't spoken so much, but um, I got a, I, and, and this wasn't even a referral. She, she sent me a handwritten thank you note about how great it was to present with me. How, when's the last time you've sent a handwritten thank you note, people? Like that is very different. The other thing that Gina did in that handwritten thank you note, you and you know this about me, Guy. I love Dunkin' Donuts, and I I can tell you where the Dunkin' Donuts is in almost a, at least ten different East Coast <laughs> airports because I'm in Seattle and we've got Starbucks and it's overpriced and awful. Um, anyway, Gina put in a a a gift card to Dunkin' Donuts, which is now sitting in my wallet. And the next time I fly into the East Coast, I'm going to buy a. Uh, a Bavarian cream and a jelly donut and a medium coffee with cream and sugar, and it'll be delicious. And I'll think of Gina. I um, love the thank you beyond. The, I love the handwritten thank you note. But you know what I really love? I love the thoughtful gift that's yes. like contextually yes. re- like you actually because guess what? It you know what it shows? It shows you care about the person. Like yes. oh, I'm thinking about you and what you're all about, where you are in the world, what's important to you. Love that one. I, it's it 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 it's you know it it's it's just and it's not that hard like it's really not that hard. Gina and I were clearly talking about my love of Dunkin' Donuts, and she put it in the back of her mind and did a great job. Um, I'll, I'll give you another tip when we're talking about thank yous. I think you need to send a thank you regardless of how bad the referral was. I think a lot of times, by the way, ninety nine percent of you aren't doing this well. 99% of you aren't sending the thank you or the gift or, or, or whatever it might be, right? But there's also this perspective that, oh, if this turns into a client, I'll send them a thank you. That's, a, that's terrible. That is, what, what a selfish perspective that you have. Um, I think you should take every single opportunity, regardless of how shitty that referral, that individual referral is, to show off your largesse by sending that thank you for every single referral, right? Um, And it's not about whether or not that that person was injured enough to be worthy of working with you that deserves a thank you. It's the fact that someone, doesn't matter who it was, thought of you when they they knew someone in need. Well, that's the thing that a lot of lawyers think too. Like, oh, like I'm the person they're going to refer to. And I I know positioning wise and marketing and niche (laughs) wise, like, Lawyers want to do that. I think, and that's a it's a good positioning to be that person. But the truth is, in especially in major metros, these lawyers they know fifty of you, 
And so it's yeah. not about like, you know, what is it going to be? And a lot of, and sadly, I know lawyers aren't going to like this and you can hashtag LHLM this one too, but um, what are they thinking about? They're like, I want to make sure that the person I'm referring to this lawyer is going to be in good hands. Okay. So that narrows my list down to 20. Next, <laughs> I want to make sure uh, that, you know, especially in the uh, context where there's a, uh, some of the, you know, and some lawyers hate this, but it depends on the context, you know, personal injury there's probably going to be a f- referral fee. So they're, they're thinking yep. about maximizing the fee. So that narrows it down to 10. <laughs> and yeah. uh, then finally, it's going to be like, well, are you top of mind? And, you know, do you, are you grateful? Those are the things that the, I'm telling you, that's what people think about. Because so many times I've seen it, in, I've been in the room where it happens and the referral will be like, oh yeah, I just wasn't thinking of you. Or, oh, right. hey, I got your email, and by the way, I, I meant to refer this case to you. It's literally, even with deep relationships, these referrals, they're happening because of top-of-mind awareness, gratitude, and of course, the trust and competency of the lawyer. But guess what? Those are, uh, there's a lot of lawyers doing that. Yeah. The trust I, I mean, you talk about top-of-mind awareness yeah. and gratitude. So I, I, like, this is why I think you send that thank you regardless. Right. Of how bad the referral no, that, that, is. That, the sad part is, to your mind. point, that's a way to stand out saying thanks. Yeah. Because no one else is yeah. doing it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So so cross that very, very small threshold. Um, the other thing that you said was gratitude. Um, one of the things I would really encourage you to do and to think about is, can you send, so we talked about the thank you note. Can you send a really great gift, the thank you gift? And I, I'm going to use two different examples. There is a... A woman, I believe she's in Manhattan, she has Down syndrome, and she wanted to go become a baker, and she couldn't get a job at a bakery, and she has now started a thing called Colette's Cookies. So, And every time you send something from Colette's Cookies, A, the cookies are amazing, and B, you are supporting someone in their entrepreneurial adventure who has Down syndrome. You are a good person, right? So you want to be memorable and show some sense of gratitude? Go go pay that forward with a Colette's Cookies. And there's plenty of things. You can do a local side to this. There's lots of things that you can do that make you stand out beyond the fruit basket, right? Yeah. Um, no, and the other one that I was going to, that you mentioned there um, in your, at least in the show notes, is the tracking and rewarding. So, you know, if the the if you refer a client or get a client, I'm sorry, yeah. if you get a client referred to you, go back and let the referral source know what happened. Now the lawyers are gonna be like, "Well, yeah. you can't blow confidences." Well, of course you can't, but you can say, "Hey, thanks for the referral," and then, "Hey, uh, you know, we've taken on, uh, you know, again, we can. Just, it's different context and how you say it and how you deliver it. I think there are some uh, ethics things you want to think about, but." Um, you know, saying thanks and then checking in with the referral source on it. I know in the in the plaintiff world, that's a very strong part of the referral equation is to keep the referral source updated about some high level things that are going on with the representation. And then when you do that, what happens? You stay top of mind. You so stay top of mind, and they feel <laughs> confident that they that the yeah. uh, they're in good hands, and that the. A client is being treated properly and that the case is being uh, followed up on. Like that stuff matters to folks. So I'm going to go back to our good friend, David. And we talked about dark social the other day. But to me, the whole point, we'll, we'll, we'll put the dark episode, uh, the dark social episode back in the show notes. Um, what but David um, is doing, and I'm, I'm blanking on it, it's David Porcellini is doing with TikTok, whether or not, regardless, so I'm going beyond the ethics side of things and going beyond the the tasteless side of things. Um, he is generating a huge referral network of people who believe that he can get people off for some really, really crazy crimes. Um, and he's leveraging the network effect and frankly, the gag effect of the content that he's like, like the, the 
it's tasteless and tasteless it it's selling right it's getting shared and he's generating a really really wide referral network right and and yes they're not going to be lawyers i can't imagine a single lawyer would would ever be like yes let's promote this but it's going to be a lot of people who may find themselves in need of david services so i really look at you know we're we're kind of enumerating these here but you know one of the, one of the top things that you can do is use dark social to um drive referrals within your town. I talk about using social media to turn your town or your city into your referral network. Um, that's a, that's a, it's, it's a huge opportunity. Very powerful. The other one, one that comes up a lot, and I actually, some people disagreed with this one on LinkedIn um, with me, but becoming a referrer. Why does people disagree with that? Be- um, it's there's a it's not even worth getting into, but a lot of people <laughs> will say the, the fact that I'm saying you know look if you refer cases out you're more likely to get cases back you know there's an they would say something like well you shouldn't be making the refer referral for that reason or something but my my point is this uh, strategically the missed opportunity is this someone calls you you're a criminal defense lawyer. Hey, uh, you know, my friend was in a car accident. Can you help me out? No, we don't do that. Have a nice day. What? <laughs> you don't know another lawyer that you might be able, that you trust would do a good job that you can refer the case to? You know, in fact, I, you know, I tell people when lawyers, when people call up and they're like, they got the wrong number, they think they called somebody else, try to help them out. I mean, I, I'll tell you, I've seen reviews online where it's like, hey, uh, this lawyer uh, wasn't the right lawyer for me, but he spent the time to listen to my issue and then made a referral to someone who could help me out, knowing that he was never going to benefit from this financially. Like that was an actual review on Google. And so what you're doing there is you're actually creating two referral sources. You're, 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 you're carrying a referral source for the lawyer and you're creating a referral source for that person that you've helped without getting anything out of it. Um the, the 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 business karma concept of this is so obvious, and I think your ability to this sounds super corny. If you try and give more than you, if you try and give without even trying to get, you will win this game. Uh, Gary Vaynerchuk basically titled his one of his his best books on uh, social media marketing, uh, "Jab Jab Jab Right Hook," which was you never make the ask early on right? Build the trust with the jabs over and over and over and over where you're not asking for anything, you're giving. And then if you do have to make that ask, when you want to make that ask, that's your right hook. I I even take it further. Just give it, go, just be, be, play the business karma game. It works. It comes back to you. The the lawyers, I mean, the lawyers that I know and admire, like they're, it's, it's such about giving back and helping other people. And then it comes back. Um, because you become known as a person who cares about other people. And like, what better position can you have as a law firm than that? Now, and one more final thing on this. I have to say it. Referrals aren't free. You right. know, we hear this all the time. Like, oh, you just do hard work and you get referrals. And you, yep, you probably do a little bit. But whether you're sending cookies or hopping on a plane to nurture a relationship or... Any other things that are that take your time? Writing a handwritten thank you note. They're not free, and you need to think about them in the context of your budget. And you know, people don't like to hear this. You know, we hear that we have the conversation. What's the we talk about cost per acquisition all the time? What's the cost per acquisition from my Google ad? What's my cost per acquisition from organic? What's the cost per acquisition from all these different channels? Well, referrals, you got to think about your cost per acquisition. Uh, in the referral standpoint, and even in, uh, cause I know what you're about to say uh, something. I'll let you say your point. Um, but my thing about it, the, the, the ancillary benefit and on top of holding it account, holding those dollars and time accountable is that you tend to do it more because you're managing it, right? You're tracking it and you're managing those budgets and those investments. And it makes you more disciplined in how you handle your referrals. Yeah. I mean the, the discipline thing, you all know you should do this. And nine out of 10 of you, 19 out of 20 of you, 99 out of 100 of you lack the discipline to do this systematically. Um, my counterpoint on the referrals aren't free is, yeah, but they're really, really cheap compared to pay-per-click. That's what I thought right? you were so, going to say, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, 
uh, the, I mean, just think, like, just think about this. Like, my referral gift of choice is a bottle of scotch, and I've backed away from that because I've sent bottles of scotch to A, people who are recovering, and B, people who um, are Mormon. So those are those have been my two faux pas with my bottle of scotch gift. But like, even if I go bananas, and oh, by the way, so ha, we can use this. I sent to one of my people, hey, please send uh, Guy a really high-end bottle of scotch as a thank you for a referral recently. This was last week, right? And I know you haven't gotten the scotch yet, but um, I know Guy likes scotch. And so well, I thought they were waiting but to find out I, if it was going to become a client. Right. That's the, so I had this argument with my sales guy. He was like, well, we got we to gotta wait. If we're going to send him a really nice bottle of scotch, we got to see whether or not blah, blah, blah turns into a client. I was like, the hell we do. Like that is such a bad message to your friends. Like I'm so and so coming back to my point, even if I go bananas on on a really, really high end bottle of scotch, compared to my like cost per click for like law firm marketing agency, and then they go to my site and there's this massive funnel that they may or may not fall through each step. A bottle of scotch, a super high end bottle of scotch is a, a pittance compared to what you're thinking about from a cost of cost per acquisition. Oh, 100%. by the way. Bottle of scotch, you can get those engraved. Thank you from Mockingbird, right? It's awesome. There you go. And then, and, and then they can't re-gift those, and they have to sit on the shelf for a while and remind them where that bottle of scotch came from. There's my, my last referral tip. Yeah, we'll put some more resources for how to uh, improve referrals. Lawmatics has a great ebook, and actually um, did a webinar with Matt uh, on this topic. So we'll put make sure that's in the show notes. Um, Let's get Colette's cookies in the show notes. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and the reserve bar, that's where you can get scotch engraved. There's, there's lots of great things that you can do. But here's it. Think local, right? Find something local that you can support. Money makes a money makes a It makes a world go round. Money makes a world go round. Yeah, money makes a world go round. Yeah, money makes a world go round. Yeah,